I, I tell Ken regularly how um, grateful I am for him. You know, I, for those who are watching, I was one of those former Protestant clergy who thought, well, it, it, there can't be any guys like me out there who are thinking about becoming Catholic. And then I Google uh, Protestant ministers become Catholic. Mm -hmm. And the first website that I find is the Coming Home Network. And I thought, okay, I'll, you know, I'll send an email over on their info email web form and I'll probably get some, you know, impersonal email back and maybe a packet of something in the mail. Well, what started happening to me is I started getting personal communication from you guys. Like you reached out to me in a very personal way. Ken uh, was providing pastoral care to me for a good, a good amount of time um, as I was navigating all of these questions and issues. And anytime I had a, you know, a substantive need for engagement, he was there. He was in, in many ways pastoring me through my experience. And it was very real. So I tell people, we don't just send folks pamphlets mm -hmm. or direct them to, you know, impersonal content on a web page, even though we do have an incredible website. What we do that's very different and what I experienced personally from you, Ken, was pastoral care. So that that's something that I was a recipient of that blessing on the mm -hmm. front end, you know, before I ever came to work for the Coming Home Network. So I'm grateful to God for your ministry, Ken, uh, to all those folks that are Thank out you. there, including me. <laughs> Well, hello, and welcome to a special behind-the-scenes episode of On the Journey with Matt and Ken and Kenny. I'm Matt Swaim, Director of Outreach for the Coming Home Network, and this is kind of like the DVD special features episode of On the Journey. <laughs> I feel like we've talked a lot about what we think, uh, you know, and how we, like, processed certain arguments, but haven't really told you much about who we are. So this is an opportunity for us to kind of get a peek behind the curtain and look a little bit into... Um, what's behind the way that we approach this stuff and and why we talk about these questions the way that we do. If you want to go and uh, check out what we do uh, on our main site, chnetwork.org is the uh, repository for all those resources. And normally I would tell you to go to um, a different site if you want to support our work. But for today's purposes, Kenny Burchard has told me in no uncertain terms, I got to send you to chnetwork.org slash compass uh, if you want to support our work uh, for today. So, Ken, Kenny. How are you? Great. Yes. Excellent. Great to see you guys. Yeah. Good to be good back to see with you, you. In these 113 episodes or so that we've done, uh, we've talked a lot about how we used to think about a topic and how we currently think about a topic, throwing in a bit of our life stories along the way, but we haven't talked so much about who we are and what we do with the Coming Home Network. And I feel like that's kind of important because uh, mm -hmm. there's a reason we talk about stuff differently, uh, perhaps, than you know other people talk about things because we... Well, it's part of the mission of our of our apostolate. And um, I want to give each of you a chance to talk about what you do with uh, the Coming Home Network and, and who we are uh, mm -hmm. as a result of that. But I, I wanted to explain my piece of it first, partly because mine is a little Great. bit easy, easier to explain than, than your all's because uh, I'm in charge of the finished product of putting out uh, the various videos and articles mm -hmm. and um, even the television show in the case of The Journey Home that we do at the Coming Home <clears throat> Network. I think that there's kind of this illusion in this world saturated with media uh, that some people might be under the impression that we are a production company that makes videos and yeah. has a YouTube channel or is a YouTube channel. Right. In fact, that's like a very small piece of what we do. And it's actually kind of like the last step in a process of a whole bunch of other things mm -hmm. that go on behind the scenes. So right. I have the incredible privilege of talking to you all, of uh, working with people who have... Um, incredible stories to share and figuring out how to facilitate the telling of those stories. And that's in the case here uh, on on the journey uh, with you two guys, two former Protestant pastors, and me, a former lay knucklehead. Uh, but we also have 
our monthly newsletter we put out, which people can get for free and subscribe to at chnetwork.org slash join. We've got Coming Home Network Presents, which is a show mm-hmm. I was just uh, honored to be able to start this past year. 25 years of the journey home, over a thousand episodes of that. Insights and signpost videos galore at this point. And uh, mm-hmm. a lot of people don't even realize this part. We have published over, well, close to 400 written testimonies on our website at chnetwork.org slash story where people can see see those stories. And and we're going to talk a little bit more about how that's all possible. But if you want to support that kind of stuff, chnetwork.org slash compass um, is is kind of the, the engine that helps those things be able to get out the way that they are. But um, all I can say in regard to all of it is just what an honor and a privilege it is to be a part of all this. I came on board with the Coming Home Network back in 2016. And I thought it was a pretty busy time then. And it is just every successive year, there's more stories to tell. There's more people um, that we get to talk to. There's bigger stuff going on. And what an incredible thing to be part of something that God is blessing. And the way Amen that, to that. It, So many good yeah, things yeah. that Marcus Scrode, I thought of in uh, baked in the cake of when he mm-hmm. had this vision back in 1990, I think it was three. Um, and to see them just continue to grow is is amazing. You're very humble uh, before Ken goes, you know, about about what you do, Matt. You really um, help us in so many ways curate our message and find all these incredible people who are converting, you know, to the Catholic Church and help them to tell their story from so many incredible mm-hmm. backgrounds. And it's just, it's just amazing, you know, the army of converts that you've been able to help um, kind of push out there and get them to talk about, you know, what the Holy Spirit has done in their lives to bring about this dramatic um, process that so many of them have have walked through. And it, for me, I'll just tell you, Matt, personally, I, I'm just grateful to you, you know, that, that this is your work because I, on my journey, stumbled across these stories and these transformative narratives that have been provided by the Coming Home Network, and they helped me, you know, incredibly on my journey. So I just, you know, my hat's off to you, and my thanks to you for for being a big part of making that happen. Hey, well, it's it's funny, you know, I'm paying it forward because I remember being in a car around like I don't know, like 2003 or something, and listening to the radio and flipping on the Catholic radio and hearing this couple. Um, who was talking about why they'd become Catholic, and they were talking mm-hmm. about their experience at a Bible college and seminary somewhere in Kentucky, and my ears perked up. I'm like, wait, that can't be, right? And next thing I know, they're talking about having gone to college and seminary at Asbury in Wilmore, Kentucky, a town of 4,000 people, where I had gone, <laughs> right? And hearing mm-hmm. that story was just like, whoa, this can't be real. And of course, it turns out as I listen through, yeah. it's the journey home. Um, that I'm listening to and just, yeah, it, it is, it is kind of wild how mm-hmm. all these stories sort of intersect and connect over time. Uh, what a cool thing to be a part of. Um, and what a cool thing that it continues to grow and blossom and, and is only kind of picking up steam year by year. I just want to break in here for a minute. My name is Seth Payne and I'm in charge of editing the On the Journey show as well as everything else we put out on our YouTube channel. If you've noticed any odd graphics or strange references to this guy named Seth behind the camera. That's me. And uh, it is it has been an honor so far to work on the on the journey show as well as everything else we put out on our YouTube channel. Starting in 2015 when we just had our signpost episodes, one going out every week, we have added so much to uh, to what we put out on our YouTube channel. I know that Matt says that we are not just a YouTube channel, but what we put out is such an important part of our of our ministry to share the stories of so many people through uh, through on the journey, through the CH Network presents, through our insights and uh, signpost videos, and our Deep in Christ episodes with uh, John Mark Grodi. And I want to let you know that that will be coming back early in 2023 with new episodes, and so. Thank you so much for, for the time that you've given us and for uh, the support, all the encouraging comments, questions that you've left under our YouTube videos. And I'm just excited to see where God is taking us in 2023 and beyond. All right, back to our regularly scheduled On the Journey program. 
mm-hmm. when I hear you talk, Matt, too, the, the word that just came out to me is the word story. That what we have, I mean, what we have at the Coming Home Network, what you do in producing the written stories and the and the uh, the television show and all that is, we just have thousands of stories. There's no, uh, I'm sure there's no larger repository of stories, conversion stories to the Catholic faith in the world outside the Coming Home Network. We have written stories, we right. have recorded stories, we we have the short videos that you also uh, work on with Seth. You know the signposts videos, short videos about special moments in in people's conversion stories, insights, special insights that they had. It's just stories. Yes. Enough about my yak. And my part is sort of the obvious part of what we do. The I take my engine hat off room. To I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Ken works in the engine room where yeah. Yeah. some well, of the coolest action yeah. is going on. This is where I come in. And I'm happy to say that many who watch our show on the journey with Matt and Ken and Kenny and the other shows that come out may think that the main thing we do are shows, that we produce shows. But actually, you read our mission statement, you open up the website, the Coming Home Network's website, our mission statement says, sharing the truth and beauty of the Catholic Church and helping you make the journey home. Uh, That's what we exist to do. We exist to share the truth and beauty of the Catholic Church, and a lot of that is in the shows that we do, you know, the newsletter we send out, all the stories we produce, the shows we do. But there's also the direct pastoral care side. That is, we are here to help you make the journey home. Now, we don't go out and put flyers on people's cars or anything like that. We, The people that come to us come to us. We deal with people who have come to us, and this is what I do. I focus on direct pastoral care. In fact, I'm the director of pastoral care for the Coming Home Network. And what that means is I work with a team of three others. We have four people who are devoted to, to helping the people that have come to us make that journey home. Now, I specialize in working with with the ordained clergy. Um, Every year, we have a great number of ordained, typically Protestant clergy, although we do have people that come from other religions as well, that come to us because they become curious about the the claims of the Catholic Church. They've begun to read some book, or they've, they've watched some videos, maybe on the journey with Matt and Ken, I don't know, and they've begun to think, that there's a possibility that that the Catholic Church could be what it claims to be, and they come to us. And what I do is I reach out to the ordained Protestant clergy, and I offer my direct assistance to work with them if they like, to provide them with resources, to talk to them, to have Zoom conferences, to to befriend them, and to try to help them in in whatever way I can. Um, my background, most most of you know, I was a Baptist pastor for eleven years myself, who then. Came, made the very difficult journey into the Catholic Church. And so I, it, even though it's been about a quarter of a century since I came in, you guys, I still feel all the way to my bones the difficulties that I faced at that time, the obstacles that Protestant clergy have in becoming Catholic. I mean, the obstacles are sometimes unbelievable. You know, I've talked to men who will say to me, I'm a Baptist pastor. The only problem is my father was a Baptist pastor. Both of my uncles are Baptist pastors. My grandfather is a Baptist pastor. Everyone I know is a Baptist. And if I become Catholic, it's going to be like an atom bomb has gone off in my family. Or I've been reading such and such book. I'm, I'm halfway convinced that I need to become Catholic. And my wife has absolutely no interest. She thinks I'm insane. Or sometimes the other way around. My wife's becoming Catholic, and I think she's insane. And so... What I do is I make contact with these people, and I do what I can to help them make their way. Right now, believe it or not, I have over 90 ordained Protestant clergy, over 90 who I am working with to one degree or another. And I looked just the other day, we have over 20 Protestant clergy that have become Catholic this year. But then beyond that, there are just hundreds of laymen and laywomen of all kinds. I work with the ones who are going to lose their income if they become Catholic. That's kind of a good way of saying it. They're, they're clergy, they're pastors, or they're missionaries, or they're academics, and I work with them. Okay, another thing that I do, uh, the focus of my work is to provide retreats, and we do a couple of retreats every year um, that are directed toward, well, laymen and women come to the retreats as well, but we want to make sure that we reach out to Protestant clergy and try to get them to come to a retreat. Because 
So many people that are on the, the road toward the church are so lonely. They just don't know anyone who understands what they're going through, anyone they can really talk to. And the experiences that these people have, when we get together for four days at a, we limit the number to about 30 people max. When, when they get together for about four days and in close contact are able over the course of four days to share their stories with one another, to share what is leading them to believe they need to become Catholic, to share the obstacles that they're facing with other people who are doing the same thing and understand them, the results are sometimes really miraculous. They're just miraculous. So I do the retreats. We also have an online community, um, over 3,000 members of our online community now that can share all day long, asking questions, um, talking to one another, answering each other's you know situations and questions. And then the On the Journey show that I do, I want to put that in the right context um, Matt, early on in this video, you mentioned that our mission, uh, you know, leads us to do the thing, things we do in a certain way. So when we started the On the Journey show, yeah, it's apologetics. We're doing apologetics, but we're doing autobiographical apologetics. And my whole mode of thought was, I want to explain to others, and primarily in my mind's eye, I have Protestant clergy or academics. I want to explain to them in detail the process of thought that led me from being from being a Baptist pastor to coming into the church on a number of issues, on the issue of authority, sola scriptura, on the issue of salvation, on the issue of baptism, the Eucharist, so many other doctrines. I want to really make clear, rather than just teaching, this is what Catholics believe, A, B, C, D, but explaining why did I come to believe that this was true? And so from a uh, package this all together. And what I'm saying is that it's an incredible privilege for me to be focused on pastoral care at the coming home network. So yes, we do apologetics. Yes, we produce videos. Yes, we share stories, thousands of stories, but we also, um, we also are willing and able to deal with people one-on-one -on -one and personally to the degree that they want it and that they feel that they need it. So that's, that's what I do. I, I tell Ken regularly how um, grateful I am for him. You know, I, for those who are watching, I was one of those former Protestant clergy who thought, well, it, it, there can't be any guys like me out there who are thinking about becoming Catholic. And then I Google uh, Protestant ministers become Catholic, mm -hmm. and the first website that I find is the Coming Home Network. And I thought, okay, I'll, you know, I'll send an email over on their info email web form and I'll probably get some, you know, impersonal email back and maybe a packet of something in the mail. Well, what started happening to me is I started getting personal communication from you guys. Like you reached out to me in a very personal way. Ken uh, was providing pastoral care to me for a good, a good, amount of time um, as I was navigating all of these questions and issues. And anytime I had a, you know, a substantive need for engagement, he was there. He was in, in many ways pastoring me through my experience. And it was very real. So I tell people, we don't just send folks pamphlets mm -hmm. or direct them to, you know, impersonal content on a web page, even though we do have an incredible website. What we do that's very different and what I experienced personally from you, Ken, was pastoral care, you know, really walking with people. And I see that on our, our community as well, our online community, uh, community.chnetwork.org, where there are thousands of people. Probably, I think the count now mm -hmm. is somewhere over 3,000 people, if I'm not um, getting the number that's wrong, right. Matt. I hope I'm. And, and these are people who interact with each other along the lines of all these difficult questions and experiences people have and the pastoral care that's provided there for those people is very real, very personal. And um, so that that's something that I was a recipient of that blessing on the mm -hmm. front end, you know, before I ever came to work for the Coming Home Network. So I'm grateful to God for your ministry, Ken, uh, to all those folks that are Thank out you. there, including me. I'm so glad to hear that. And I remember well talking to you before. In fact, I remember when you when you called because you were just really discouraged, too, about things. And we had conversations. Yep. And I'm, you know, so I really, really, really appreciate that.
Well, and bear in mind too, uh, we didn't charge you anything for that help, right? <laughs> that's that's a big part of it too, <laughs> is true. because these pastors, that's, that's true. Uh, that's you true. know, they can't just use the church credit card to like ring up, you know, counseling hours with uh, with a Catholic apostle. I mean, that's and we're gonna get to more of of how that all works and and how people make this possible in a minute with you, Kenny. I- um, I could still send an invoice. I could send you an invoice. I mean, you we, could. we talked even more than an hour. <laughs> See, I'm like a psych in my role. I'm like a psychiatrist, but instead of dealing with people who are insane, I I view myself as dealing with people who who are going insane because they've caught a vision <laughs> of the truth and beauty of the Catholic Church, and they find they can't escape it. So they're anyway. going sane, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. They're going so sane, sane, and I try to help them right. over the fence. Well, ahead, but Matt. I want to take a moment too to shout out the incredible pastoral care team that you have that you work with because mm-hmm. you know you mentioned that you're kind of the point person for all the people who, who we talk to who um, they have some kind of pastoral ministry they could uh, lose their entire income if they become <laughs> Catholic but um, we have so many lay people from every background you could possibly imagine that we work with as well and you've got an awesome team of Denise mm-hmm. Bossert and Jim Anderson who's been here longer than anybody but Marcus Grodi and uh, brother Rex Anthony Norris uh, who's a hermit from Maine uh, who when people send us in prayer requests, he goes, does a whole hour for people and then sends them a card yeah. afterwards. I mean, it's an incredible thing yes. to be a part of. Um, and, uh, we're as busy now as we've ever been on that front. Um, again, not going out doing some kind of like flyering of Protestant churches in the area, but just handling the people who are coming to us with inquiry, um, is just an incredible thing to be able to, to, to have where, an awesome network of people. Where else can you get your own private hermit? <laughs> praying for you and doing yeah. holy hours for you. It's pretty awesome. Anyway, anyway, go it's ahead, Kenny. The, what do you do? Well, it's one of the things that I love about this apostolate mm-hmm. and knowing, because I see, I think you guys do too, I see every prayer request at least that comes in online. And I can tell you, if you send us a prayer request, a Catholic hermit <laughs> is going to get on his knees and pray for you and and mm-hmm. and lift that up to the Lord as a petition, you know, to the Lord. So it's really, really cool uh, to know. You know, I came on this team um, f- before I was I was a recipient of all this incredible ministry, uh, especially to Protestant pastors who are making the journey into the church. I came, if, if you will, as a as a recipient of your good work. And um, when I left pastoring in 2013, I got into the world of fundraising and philanthropy and raising money for charities and I worked for some incredible um, nonprofits and charities. And over the course of my relationship with the Coming Home Network, it was, I was outed, as if you will, as being a fundraiser. And that's what I do. I'm the director of development here at the Coming Home Network now. Joined the team a year ago, November. And um, my work is with an incredible group of people. They are our donors and our partners. And in 2022, we have around 5,000 donors who are our ministry partners. They're our missionary partners who help make our work possible. They make sure that all of these incredible resources and these people are are available to those who reach out to us every year uh, on their journey. And one specific group of donors that I work with are our Compass donors. Matt, you mentioned that, you know, at the beginning of of uh, the top of our our show here, uh, chnetwork.org/compass. Mm-hmm. Of those five thousand donors that I get to work with, uh, almost five hundred of them. In fact, I was telling you before we hit record, there are four hundred and ninety four people in Compass who are monthly donors to the Coming Home Network. So where are my YouTube six at? I need my YouTube six to come and (laughs) become part of Compass and make it an even 500 in 2023. But these are people who support us every single month with a gift of 10, 25, 50, or $100. They make sure that we have the resources that we need every day to do our, our work. And, um, you know, I get to talk to them. I get to interact with them. I get to hear why they support uh, what we do. And most of them say that it's because they see the impact that we're having, especially on non-Catholic clergy and helping them 
um, become Catholics. And I get to tell them, often with tears in my eyes, how grateful I am Mm. to them for making sure that this apostolate was there for me when I needed it. So I I get to Mm -hmm. say thanks to all those people. And one of the ways that we say thanks to our compass donors in specific, everyone who joins this growing army of monthly donors, um, there's four levels. The first level at $10, they all receive our monthly newsletter as a gift uh, every single month. And by the way, in 2023, the newsletter is coming out in color. So you'll get... 12 issues of that in color uh, if you become part of Compass. The second group of people gets a book of conversion stories called Journeys Home. One, those who give at the third level, uh, $50 a month, get Journeys Home. Two, and those who give at the $100 uh, level, they get Thoughts for the Journey Home by Marcus Grodi, and it's a signed copy. And this is really like having Marcus sit down with you and kind of pastor you through some of these big questions uh, that we all go through when we're thinking about becoming Catholic. And that's our gift to of thanks to those who join us. My privilege, my honor, is to get to work with our truly our missionary partners in this mission to share the truth and beauty of the Catholic faith as people are coming home. So that's what I get to do. And it's a lot of fun. Tell them about the Shepherds Fund. Well, yeah, and that's really kind of something I'm very proud of. You know, Ken and I, early in my time here, we thought, well, what can we also do to help more pastors Mm -hmm. come to our in-person events, especially our retreats and get the pastoral care that they need? and make sure that there is not a cost to them, that they can just come on our nickel, as it were. So we started the Shepherds Fund in November of 2021. And in the first year, guys, we raised just shy of $60,000. About $59,000 came in uh, over the course of that year. Uh, major gifts, grants, big and small gifts came in. Mm -hmm. And we were able over the course of the year to bring something like 16 or 18 Mm -hmm. non-Catholic clergy and their spouses, some of them their spouses, to our retreats, our in-person events. And so we had an incredible first year. A lot of generous people gave to the Shepherds Fund Now, here we are, we're six weeks in, six or seven weeks into the second year of doing the Shepherd's Fund, and we've already raised in actual gifts, pledges, and grants around $50,000 toward the Shepherd's Fund. So this is taking Mm -hmm. off. People are, people are getting excited about it. They, they love this, um, this mission that we have to help more Protestant clergy come home and they're funding it. They're helping us to make these funds available. So I'm very, very honored to be uh, to be part of that. So those are some of the things I, I'm involved I can, in. If I can pitch guys. in a word, if I can pitch in a word on that, um, uh, Protestant clergy, when they begin to contemplate resigning their ministry, possibly to become Catholic, they may be young, but they may be older. They may be in their forties or fifties and they are really frightened and thinking, what am I going to do to earn a living? How in the world am I going to support my family? if I stop doing the thing that I've been doing my whole adult life and that makes that yeah. provides an income for my family and they're worried about it. And so um, I, I have seen responses from them that are so powerful when I tell them, we want you to come to the retreat and no, you don't have to pay for it. Right. Our donors are making it, may, are making it such that you can come for free. And that includes the flight. We will pay for your retreat. We'll pay for your flight. We'll pay for everything. And I, 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 they've been choked up before. Like they just couldn't believe. Why would you do this? Why are you just giving us this? But that's part of what we're able to do. Yeah, if I could yeah, just uh, uh, first. do a little piece of backdrop on yep. that. You know, the we had sort of a proto shepherd's fund gift before even Kenny came on. Uh, there mm-hmm. was someone who um, was just a person that we needed to connect with and needed to talk to. And this uh, friend of this person says, you got to meet this lady. I, I will make sure that there's no cost involved for anybody mm-hmm. if you just connect with this person. And and what a cool thing to be able to talk to our donors who are like, I know somebody who needs what you're doing so badly that I'm willing to, <laughs> to make mm-hmm. sure that they don't even have to worry about a flight or anything. And And you guys have seen it too. Like, you see the power of what what happens, and you guys both know this too. When you are a pastor or 
and not just a pastor, a layperson of any kind exploring the Catholic faith, and you hear a story that sounds like yours, and it resonates with you. Now take that to the next level. Yes. You're in a room with a dozen people just like yourself who are on a similar journey, and suddenly you're not alone anymore. It's not just a story you're hearing. Mm -hmm. It's people you're drinking coffee with, right, and bouncing stuff off. It's an incredible thing. The fruit that comes out of these in-person uh, things that we do, uh, these retreats, is just it's unbelievably amazing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's such an honor. It really is. Yeah. So the one thing I also wanted to mention, uh, you know, you mentioned the the compass and, and, and I do want to give the kind of the appeal, the ask out here at the end one more time. Uh, you know, I've been involved in a lot of different Catholic media over the years through radio, TV, print, you name it. I've done it uh, going all the way back to probably about 2006. Uh, but I got to say that out of all the projects I've ever been involved with, for some reason, On the Journey has like this strangely strong response, <laughs> and it has it from people who are um, interested in the church. I mean, you see them all the time, right? The comments are like, I started watching it at episode 20, and by episode 60, I was like contacting my local Catholic <laughs> parish, right? <laughs> we yeah. see these things all the time. Um, and I would just encourage you that if you have any any slight feeling or loyalty towards what we're doing here, please do consider, uh, you know, becoming a compass uh, giver because uh, we want to make sure that anybody who stumbles across this uh, project, um, that there's already this place, this partnership involved to help them to hear the things that they need and to connect with the people they need to connect with uh, and, and be, be a mission partner with us at chnetwork.org slash compass Amen. because it is an incredible thing to wake up every morning and come to work doing this because the holy spirit has got surprises like a hundred of them a day and it's pretty incredible so i don't amen. know if you guys have anything amen. to add to that okay. but just that we love you we love uh, I, I love you guys i love our viewers the people that are that are watching this program that tune in so faithful and those who support our work we love you too we're, we're so grateful to god for for all of you so with all that said Thanks for a great 2022. Thank you, for, thank you for your support of the Coming Home Network. Thank you for your support specifically of this program on the journey with Matt and Ken and uh, Kenny. Late, late have we loved him, Kenny Burchard. Kenny. Uh, we thank you so much uh, for being a part of this mission and part of this apostolate. Again, chnetwork.org slash compass if you want to keep it rolling. And if you've got a story or if you're in the middle of a journey, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We want to connect with you. We want to hear where you are and work with you and connect with you and, and be of any kind of service that we can. So I'm Matt Swaim, Director of Outreach on behalf of Ken Hensley, Director of Pastoral Care, and Kenny Burchard, Director of Development. Thank you again. Gentlemen, Thank we'll you. talk to you next time Good around. Okay. Bless you guys. Bye-bye.